Hey guys, it's Sarah and Ginger. This is our dog, Ginger. This is one of our dogs. We have Mixie, who we are babysitting. He's our cousin's dog. And then we have Lump. I don't know where he is. But anyway, <laughs> so today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this dog collar that Ginger has on. So let's get started. Okay, so the things you will need will be a buckle, which I got from a dog collar, a D-ring, which I also got from a dog collar, and about 16 times the length of paracord as your dog collar. That sounds confusing, but you'll see. Um, now I'm just measuring the length of Ginger's collar and then I'm gonna cut off the buckles from a really cheap dog collar. Just so that, um, it's better than just buying buckles because then it's um, stronger. You know it's strong enough to be a dog collar. So there's that one I'll cut off. It's really easy to cut these off. Now for the D-ring, which this is the thing that holds the leash if you're going to use, put a leash on the regular collar, or the um, tags and everything with all of the information on it. So, yeah, that's an important part. Now the other side of the buckle, that one came off really easily. And there we go. Now you're going to need about 16 times the length of your collar. So mine was 16 inches long. So I need 16 times that approximately. A little bit more than that actually. So then you're going to cut off about six feet of that and light the ends. Fold that in, fold that six times the length of your collar. That's about the length that it should be. And you're gonna thread that through the outside buckle part. I don't know what side this is called, but it was, you can see which side it is. So you're just gonna thread the loop. So you're gonna find the center of the um, paracord. Then you're gonna thread that loop through the buckle and thread the ends through the loop. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing because it's kind of confusing. But yeah, that's it. Then just tape your thing down. Then you're gonna need another piece of paracord that's 10 times the length of your collar. I added a little bit more just to be sure, but about 10 times the length of your collar, of your dog's collar, the existing one, which again, for me, was 16 inches. So about 10 times that. Then I'm just burning the ends of each end of those so that they don't fray while I'm working, which makes it a lot easier. Then again, I'm finding the center of the piece of paracord. And I'm putting that center fold, I guess, underneath the, well, first I'm putting another piece of tape on <laughs> the, um, buckle to hold it down even better because I put another piece through the buckle so then that'll hold it even better then another piece on top to hold it even better better but then I'm taking that middle piece and putting it under the other piece um like you can see on the screen and then I'm just going to fold the left side it doesn't matter which side you start on over the middle two strands put the right side over top of that strand 
then put the right side under the middle strands and then you're going to loop that one under and through the loop that the left one created. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you can see it on the screen. We're going to do that two more times and then we'll go into time lapse. So whatever side your bump, I guess, is on, that's the side that you want to start on. So again, you make the loop, put it over the middle two strands, under the other strand, put the left one, in this case, under the middle two strands, and through the loop, as you can see on the screen, because I am bad at explaining things. Then you want to pull that nice and tight. The first one's always the hardest one. But then since the bump's on the left side, you're going to start on that side. So put the left string over the two middle ones, put the right one over top of that left one, or put the left one under the right one, doesn't matter which way you say it. But then put the right one under the middle two strands, hopefully I'll do that. So put the, the right one under the middle two strands and through the loop that the left one created. Hopefully that makes sense. If you need to rewatch it, can right now. But yeah, that's it. And just pull tight. So now I'm spinning going extra fast. I got really good at this. Just kidding. It's a time lapse. So I'm just speeding through. Now I went 20 loops down and now I'm going to put my D ring on. D ring on. So I'm just going to put it through the middle two, or the middle two strands through the D ring. And then I'm just gonna do a knot as usual. So I'm gonna start on the, oops. I was, I mixed up my left and right, oops. We're gonna start on the right side. <laughs> Put the left one through the right one and pull tight. This is really confusing for me. Hopefully you can just see what's on the screen and do that. It's very confusing to tell people what it is. Yeah. Hmm. I can't believe I mixed up my left and right for so long. And we're just going to do the same thing as, as you were doing. And this actually goes by, this project actually goes by really fast. Um, few. Just take your time, go through it. And it actually goes by, I don't know how long this took me. But it, it at least didn't seem like it took me very long. Probably like half an hour maybe. I don't know but it didn't take me very long, as long as you might think. Um, so now I'm trying, I'm starting to try it on Ginger. Um, yeah, to make sure it's the right, about the right length. So to make the final sizing, you put the two buckle ends together so that you can, so then if the, where the loops end and the buckle <laughs> starts, those meet. <laughs> this is very confusing. Then it just helps <laughs> you to know where it's supposed to be. Anyway, <laughs> I'm really bad at explaining things. We're going to put the middle two through the bottom section of the buckle. You can see on the screen again. 
again, I'm bad at explaining things. But what I'm doing, basically, it's just putting the middle two strings through the bottom part of the buckle. And then the top two are going to, or the outer, the outer two are going to go through the top part of the buckle. Because there's two sections, because this is the part that was like sizable, I guess. It's like the, the adjustable part side of it. So it has two things which makes it really easy to tie up. So now I'm just slipping this through. And I'm just gonna pull that tight. And then tie um, the left two in a knot. Pulling it very tight. Then the right two and a knot. Pulling that one tight as well. And then the middle two I'm also putting in a knot. You don't really have to do this, but I am. Because I have enough room inside my buckle and I think it would help make it more secure. So. Pulling that one really tight. Da, 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 da. That one's getting really tight too. Okay. Now I'm just cutting off all of the ends. This part was really nerve wracking because I didn't know if I tied it off right. I think I did. I looked up some videos on how to make this. I made it up on my own but I looked up some videos on how to tie it off and everybody tied it off differently it didn't look like how mine looked so I don't know if this is the best video to watch for this um but yeah anyway I'm just burning it burning the ends so that it stays together hopefully better I don't know I'll give some updates if it ever breaks it breaks um but if it does break you could just make a new one and then if your dog grows or shrinks I don't know dogs grow or shrink then you could just make a new one. Oh, and then this part I'm actually really proud of it's like a really good montage of it of everything look, look at this it's so professional oh my gosh Now I'm just going to put it on Ginger, Mixie, the dog that we're babysitting. Um, she's going to leave next Sunday, but sadly, along with my cousins. But yeah, my cousins are actually coming today. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> I'm just putting on the new collar onto Ginger. She looks really cute here because she's like showing her belly because she needs belly rubs. I gave her some belly rubs after this video and during it. Now I had to leave to turn the camera off and she was like, hi. And then she fell back down. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, Ginger's running away. <laughs> anyway, bye.